Hello everyone, my name is John Jetter. I'm the music director of the Fort Smith Symphony in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and on Zoom, uh, phone, video, whatever, is uh, Urjean Kang, who is a violinist in the Chinookay Orchestra, and she's a violinist in my orchestra. She's actually the concertmaster. And we share a number of uh, uh, common goals, interests. One of them, which if we have a chance to talk about it, is our involvement in the music of Florence Price, which I know uh, chimes into Chinookay's mission. So, okay, but we have some questions. And I need, sorry, I need to put my glasses on here. Um, obviously, we're in a very bizarre situation that is a tailor-made uh, apocalypse for musicians, unfortunately, at least in the short term. Ah. So um, in what ways has the lockdown affected you, all this coronavirus craziness? I feel like the way in which it's affected me in a way is no different than anybody else, but I still feel like it deserves mentioning, which is on a day-to-day -day level, I feel like it's really created a lot of unstructured time, which for some people has been chaotic. And for, for all of us, I know it's been um, a process of transition. Um, all of a sudden having all this empty space in the beginning um, was both a source of relief, but also a source of anxiety. I think a lot of musicians shared those sort of those dual feelings. Um, I think just on the, the negative side of things, I think all of us are very anxious about what the future will look like after this time passes. Um, it's also really difficult to plan for anything because nobody knows what the timeline is going to look like, what the scenario is going to look like, how people are going to feel. But on the bright side, I do think that it has made a lot of communities come together. It certainly forced me to kind of look into some video technique skills that I've been putting off for a very long time. And um, I've been connecting with a lot of my friends. And for example, my parents, I've been connecting with them every day. So I do find that a lot of the unstructured time has had both its positives and negatives. Very good, very good. What about you, John? I'm drinking a lot more alcohol than I used to. <laughs> 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 I, I knew know. it. <laughs> you knew it. Uh, you know, um, you had mentioned a couple of things. Uh, practically speaking, it is amazing how our orchestra, like every other one, is not performing. And, but the amount of time that has been spent in planning has just been crazy. We have, uh, really, we probably have seven different plans, you know, where we're just ready to go, like in the starting gate. And uh, like so many people, we have to wait until there is an official green light or as close as one we can have. And, you know, some days it's a little more, you know, it, maybe it's a little scarier. Actually, today I had to uh, take my daughter somewhere and I was out on the main drag in, in Fort Smith. And I'm, it looked like a normal day. Everything in the parking lots and a lot of places were full that I thought wouldn't be. Of course, here we're just now, I think, I think just the idea that, uh, we're going to start to get back to some schedule. I think everyone has just said, okay, right. that was time. So a lot of people are already opening up uh, where are the symphony offices uh, and, and it's in a mall and there's some stores open already, which is surprising. So it's happened quick, but yeah, I've been uh, super involved in planning really. It'll be interesting um, to see, especially with the South thinking of reopening in the next few weeks on a more, yeah, a more yeah, earlier schedule. Southern America, and right. international colleagues, we just, you know, we just, to heck with science. <laughs> <laughs> you cut some of this out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, yeah, but yeah, it, it's a real interesting thing. And of course, one of the problems is as we, as we are going through all this, we're getting every conceivable bit of information. Right. You know, from very, I mean, so, Usually, and I know, you know, I know science is science, but probably, you know, it's kind of somewhere in the middle and uh, we, want to, we want to get back to normal. So, however, this time is very much not normal. So what are you doing musically during this time? What's happening? Well, I've been still continuing to practice the things that um, I was practicing. Um, I always have some side projects that are just for me in the sense that they're not even really for a concert or for a project, but just things that I, I kind of like to do as a routine. So those things have definitely anchored me in a time where I think 
before when you have concerts, those things definitely make it to the top of the list because there's deadlines. Um, I've tried to create a new routine for myself. I, I find that um, those things have really helped me kind of gauge what day of the week it is and um, just creating little deadlines, even if they aren't um, projects for other organizations or other people. Although I do have to say, just as I was uh, mentioning about the video technology, that I've started um, for my own practice and also in the spirit of collaboration, been trying out these different syncing, multi-tracking softwares where I record my part and uh, my partner or someone else might be um, uh, recording their parts and then I, I try to, or they put it together. And it's been, it's been interesting. It's a pretty simple technology in a way in the sense that it's existed for a long time, but I just, I never found a reason to really, I don't know, invest in, in, the, in the skill of it. Right. So, so it's been nice to be in a way forced to finally learn how to do little simple things like that. Um, and there are, are a few graduating seniors, for example, in um, our community. And it's been nice to kind of say, hey, since we can't really see each other, we can't really connect other than video, what if we tried to do some collaborations together? And so um, my project this week will actually be recording some covers. Um, I just finished with uh, one of the high school seniors um, doing Don't Stop Believing. Good. Very good. So, you know, my venture into pop music a little bit. Um, Very good. It's about time. It's about time, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, just trying to find ways to continue to connect with people, um, create new routines, learn new skills. Yeah, exactly. Well, very good. Again, mine just been a, a lot of planning. I guess maybe thinking about music. Uh, I'm uh, studying. You know, it's hard studying scores, but by the same token, like well, we're gonna we're gonna get to do this. But it's still, uh, and ironically, in a very different way, if you think about our upcoming season, there is a lot of a lot of film music. There's even some popular music on the Lady Gaga on the season, which every symphony orchestra you know loves to play. I, I do. Mm. So it's a chance to maybe be thinking a little bit more about music, and I guess. You know, it gives you a chance to think a little bit more about music's purpose, you know, right. and its value um, and um, how different people value it and what's the value going to be like in the future. I mean, it, yeah, it has a huge value, but we'll see how long this takes. And, you know, you know, a lot of people in a situation like this, a lot of people remember it and then a lot of people don't. You right. Know? And, and, you know, there's, there's that old discussion now. Of, I hope things get back to normal. Well, not totally. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> So I hope we kind of I hope we kind of learn from this. There'll be a total realignment of what normal is also after this. I mean, yeah. like going yeah. back to what was, I don't think is going to really be possible. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully, you know, th there's some things that that were that weren't great, and hopefully, we can say, okay, you know, maybe there really will be no more coughing in <laughs> concerts ever again. <laughs> Um, what do you do? Well, you kind of uh, touch on this, but your like your very top uh, methods for staying motivated right now. Right, right. Um, for me, I I have found that connecting with people and trying to do collaborations um, has always been really motivating, and so that's the one thing I I have found really difficult. Um, the alone time and sort of the sheltering in place, it, by comparison, has not been as difficult. It's just feeling like I always have to play by myself um, and not have a culminating event, a concert or a performance where I can feel like, yeah, all that hard work that I've done in private now can finally be presented. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like the video um, collaborations have been a really good halfway point where I feel like I can still meet people and there's a deadline, there's a meeting and we have a project and even if the video doesn't necessarily go anywhere it's a great place to just um, have some fun. So right, right. what about you John? Well it's a little different I mean I'm not totally isolated. Right know? that's true. I basically I do I fortunately I have a home office and right. Uh, you know, my family, you know, Karen's a violin teacher, so she's attempting to teach orchestra online. Right, she's right. Getting, that's a whole other crazy thing. And then my daughter, who's a violinist, who's in high school, she's, she, has the, she has the other side of it. She's the, the, uh, the teacher. So I can hear, like, swearing 
from both sides, you know, a teacher <laughs> and a student simultaneously, but it's about a different teacher and student. So it's great. I love it. Um, so as you're having this time to think about a lot of things, which we all do, uh, if you think about some of your biggest influences in your life, uh, who either could be, I guess, could be any, any from anywhere. Well, I was thinking about this and I thought that it would be a really great place for both of us maybe to talk about Florence Price because I feel like there's so many different influences um, in my life, but Florence Price has definitely been a big one for both of us, I feel. Um, both of our albums came out about a year apart from each other, but we had been talking about this, oh, I don't know, even three, four years before that time. Um, as everyone will know, she's from Arkansas. She was born in Little Rock. And so, yes, and so for us, you know, being able to record her symphonies in Arkansas um, and her, and for me, you know, her concertos, mm -hmm. it's, it's been so um, influential and as an artist. And the more I learn about her as a person, as a historical figure, I've found her so inspirational. It's given me a great window into Southern history since I, I wasn't born here. And um, it's taught me so many great lessons about resilience and courage, um, artistic and personal. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for me, she's sort of been a, uh, in the best sense, she's uh, been a battering ram or sort of nudged or pushed the idea of, you know, all, all those great composers who we all like to perform, there's a lot of other people out there. You have this, you know, fantastic American woman uh, writing music that we, we love, that is terrific. And it's nice to see, uh, especially in America and in England, those are the two big, countries that are performing her music and actually a lot of orchestras this coming year and even this current season up until the cancellations there's a lot of performances of her music and next year just one example she's on this her music's on the season closing concert of the los angeles Philharmonic. right you know? and not to not to talk about how great we are but we could for a second uh, you know we actually it's funny here we are in arkansas and we took this project on and really really the press really about with the, our recordings yeah uh, we were able to get great press we didn't ask for it we were both surprised yeah we had a lot of people uh, reading about her uh, all over the really all over the, the world and i think that got people interested in performing her music and it's part of that stream of trying to, to maybe finally now starting to really include uh other composers besides all the you know the dead guys was it connected at all to the prior project with um, recording William Grant Still Symphonies? I actually don't remember how recording yeah. symphonies came about. Yeah, well, and William Grant Still, again, uh, well, uh, Price is a, a born and raised Arkansan. William Grant Still uh, is an unofficial Arkansan. He was born in Woodville, Mississippi, but he moved uh, to uh, Arkansas when he was four. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed to me that they're, they're both uh, first African-American, uh, significant African-American composers, first male, first female, and they're both pretty much from here. Yes. So, and uh, for people, I think for a lot of your international uh, listeners um, listening to us, probably, especially the European ones, they can really celebrate their country easily. They have all those composers that we all, we all know. And in America, we have composers, but uh, I also wish that we did a lot more celebrating of music that happens in our specific states. Because you find out, uh, doing some homework, there's a lot of real interesting composers in music that's, that really is local. Yes. I just think it's hugely important. So I, I hope that all, I hope all of this price uh, work can get out there. And I think as these uh, larger orchestras uh, and more people perform her music, I think people are going to go, wow, that's, you know, that's really excellent. Yes. Yeah. John, I'm going to ask the next question first. Okay. Um, what do you know now that you wish you had known at age 15? I got a hoot out of this because I thought, well, you're going to have to think for a while now, John. You're pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have to think quite as long. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, I guess, boy, that's tough. I'm, that's a tough one. I yeah. think probably most things don't matter. 
you know, and you really have to look at those super important things that make a difference, especially when you're, you know, 15, oh my gosh, everything is, you know, <laughs> you know you're experiencing a lot of things for the first time or ideas for the first time and everything. And, and of course, back then, the world totally revolves around you, right? right. It's right. incredible that, you know, you're the king of the world, but right. it's not that way at all. Right. And um, I think a lot of the things that tie us all together, things that we do, our relationships, uh, how we interact with our families and relatives and colleagues, things that can be taken for granted so much. That's right. at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Right. I had something similar too, which is just learning the value of time and learning that a lot of things are impermanent and maybe that kind of ties in with what you were saying about, you know, there's a lot of things you can let go and um, it, it's about perspective, you know, yeah, but, exactly. uh, but I do exactly. think at this, but I do think at the same time, it's not really possible to know those things at 15. I think you have to kind of experience life and then you can, you can look back. And so I don't necessarily regret that I didn't have better insight at age 15. I think I can look back on that time and sort of say, okay, my perspective has definitely changed. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's like a lot of you know astronauts will get that you know they're they and I, I say that because you know I like aviation, so you kind of see planes in the background. But yes, you know you fly in a small plane and you kind of see everything, and then you you know go on an airline trip. But then those guys who fly the test planes or are astronauts, when they you know no matter the background, when they see the whole planet as that ball, it just, it's, it, all of them say it's just a life-changing experience. Yes. See, there's, there's that perspective. You know, that's something I, wish, something I wish I could do, but uh, it's too late to change careers to go to astronaut training. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to ask you about uh, switching gears a little bit about books. I think it's sort of our last question. And yes. uh, maybe a favorite book or a, the one book that you, uh, if only you have one book during the quarantine or if, Heaven forbid, after a quarantine, you have to go to like a deserted island and you can right. only take a look with you. Well, and I just, I always think of those questions and I think, oh, can I only take one book? But um, I, I, I can share the, the most recent book that I reread. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it because it's such a classic. Um, don't ask me why I chose to reread it, but it was uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Okay. So I don't know why I was reading about Auschwitz and concentration camps, but I, I just felt like it was a good time to revisit reading that book because the last time I read it was actually in high school. So okay. again, talking about perspective, I sort of thought, well, maybe it's a good time to be revisiting this book and just seeing, um, you know, how it affects me now. And um, there was a lot that I had forgotten about the book actually, because it was part of a series on the Holocaust that I was required to read for the entire year during high school. So to be honest with you, so many of those books started to um, overwhelm me uh, as a teenager. Yeah. I mean, reading, you know, 50 books on the Holocaust for an entire year, it just kind of all gets sort of um, emotionally, I think you get <laughs> tapped out. Did you do that for a, was it for a class or you were just interested in learning more about it? No, we had a whole segment on the Holocaust uh, as required reading. Okay. Right, so it, it was a lot for a teenager. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. wow. But um, but it was it was nice if I can say that uh, it was very insightful and deep and profound to be able to re reread that book again. So I suppose um, it's one of those books, like many great books, where I feel like um, you read it and then you kind of soak in the ideas, but then you have to come back to it. Um, right. So maybe for that reason, I would probably take it to a deserted island just so I could keep coming back to it and have the time. Okay. okay. What about you, John? Well, I don't know. I would bring a charger and bring my phone and have a <laughs> book series. That's what I would do. Or figure out, I have like, do like a, a solar panel, you know? That's a good idea. A library, I think. It was really hard to decide on one book. I mean, there's so many, you know, great books out there. Are you an ebook reader? Uh, no, I would for the island. Yeah, I'd have right, to for the it. island, right. No, I still, I still like paper. Yeah. Um, and um, I know it's, I know it's, it's a tree or a branch. Right. But I still, you know, I think there's something uh, we all know as musicians. Uh, yeah. We know uh, that tactile thing we have to have, and it helps yeah. in, the, it helps in the learning process and the retention process. I'm pretty sure. I guess at some point, symphony musicians will go into iPad mode, but I. I really still love the paper, so. 
Yeah, well, yeah, and we're, we're starting to sneak, you know, in our orchestra, they're sneaking, yes. and I haven't said anything, because it made right. me look weird, but yeah, I mean, think about it, 20 years from now, 30 years yeah. from now, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, so I, I think we've probably way exceeded our time enough. <laughs> I'll just, they can just take everything out that I said. Yeah. And have a nice, uh, have a nice uh, interview with you. So anyway, uh, I miss you. You know, miss having, miss doing concerts with you. And yes. And uh, you're a, a wonderful part of the Chinook Orchestra. And I wish them the success. They're obviously, they have the right idea. Yeah. And I wish that idea was more, um, was just more, I mean, they're doing it and it just yeah. needs to be more prominent everywhere. Yes. I hope that becomes the norm, I should say. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, All thank right. you so much for your time, John. Thank you, be good. <laughs> you too. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.